My name is Thais Gibson, and I'm the creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video, and this is part two of an earlier series I've been doing about how to really heal anxious, preoccupied attachment style. So in part one of this, of this sort of mini series here, um, I covered a few key points. I'm not going to go through them in a lot of detail. You can find that video uh, using the link below if you want to start with part one. But part two is basically leapfrogging off of part one, and it covers a few key ideas. Key idea number one is that healing is possible for all attachment styles. And I know this conclusively because I was a fearful avoidant, did a lot of inner work. I'm completely securely attached now and have seen literally thousands of students come through our programs who have become truly secure. So healing basically involves reconditioning. In the part one video, I talked in more detail about how reconditioning happens, but essentially whatever we're exposed to through repetition plus emotion creates programs because they fire and wire these programs sort of into the subconscious mind. And let's say you're exposed to feeling not good enough all the time because you have a critical parent well, or you, know, you, you fear abandonment because there's this sort of like abandonment threat that comes up in your childhood. Well, the repetition and emotion of that's gonna fire and wire that into your subconscious. And then you're gonna grow up and take that with you everywhere. But you're not born with those things. So you can recondition them just by the same principles of how they got conditioned into you. So in this video today, I'm actually going to take you through a reconditioning tool. Um, and you can actually see how some of these different things take place. So I'm going to share my screen here for a moment. Um, and please keep in mind, like so much of what we offer at the personal development school, because it's just so much more in depth than I can ever go on this, this channel. You know, I answer a lot of questions on this channel about like this attachment style or these patterns and gain insight. And insight is the first step to healing insight and awareness. But then once we specifically gain insight, it's then reconditioning, whether it's reconditioning our relationship to our emotions, to our needs, or reconditioning painful limiting beliefs we have about ourselves at the subconscious level of mind. You want to keep in mind too, that um, your conscious mind is responsible for roughly 90 or sorry, three to 5% of your thoughts, your feelings, your decisions, your behaviors, your beliefs about yourself and your subconscious mind and unconscious mind are roughly 95 to 97% of that stuff. So if you've ever had the experience of like trying to will yourself to do something like will yourself to be confident or will yourself to go to the gym or will yourself to feel better, like it doesn't work like that. And that's because the conscious mind can't outwill or overpower the subconscious mind. All we can do is reprogram, which does require some commitment, but you know, you can take programs with you for decades and then rewire them in a matter of days and, and really see that transformation happen. So we'll talk a little bit about how to do this. So this is the first tool that I'm going to cover. And, and this can be for self-esteem. Part of this presentation I'm pulling from here is a, a corporate program we did for self-esteem and success. But um, this really applies to our anxious, preoccupied individual if we look at these core beliefs here. So these are different belief patterns that we tend to pick up on. And what we talked about before is this acronym of BTEA. And it's that beliefs lead to thoughts. Thoughts lead to emotions, emotions lead to action. So, you know, the anxious preoccupied example here is I am a bit, I'll be abandoned or alone. If you're exposed to the repetition and emotion of abandonment growing up, right? Even if it's perceived abandonment, then that creates this program. Then you grow up in your adult life and in your dating and relationship life, you start going, this belief is still there, right? It hasn't been rewired or reconditioned. It's, it's just there until we rewire things. And then you get close to somebody and they pull away or a pattern changes and you go, oh, I'm about to be abandoned. And that belief comes up and it creates patterns of thought, you know, so BT, right? We have this acronym BTEA, beliefs to thoughts. So these are our beliefs. This is our belief here. I, I'm abandoned or I'll be abandoned. The thought would be they're pulling away. They're not going to want to be with me. Things can't last forever. I have to do something, right? You've got these thought patterns that will follow. How do you feel when you're thinking these thoughts, right? BTE, you start to feel negative emotions, which are made up of neg negative neurochemical reactions. So now you've got your E, which is the emotions, and you start to feel insecure, afraid. And then neuroscience has proven every decision we make is an emotionally based decision at its tipping point. Even those of you who think you're logical, rational thinkers, mm -mm, 
still making emotionally based decisions. So you can see the actions, B-T-E-A actions, you can see the actions of the anxious preoccupied individual are going to be to hold on, to cling, to try. It's, it's a coping mechanism to try to prevent the pain associated with those be beliefs being triggered. Now, that's why you'll see, for example, a dismissive avoidance, somebody pulls away and they go, okay, no problem, because they have different beliefs. So it's not the objective experience that affects us. It's our subjective relationship to objective experiences in our lives based on our own internal programming. DA has somebody pull away, they're okay with it. They don't have this big core wound of fearing abandonment. AP has, you know, somebody pull away and they start having these beliefs activated in their subconscious mind, which creates these feelings of panic, right? These, these belief patterns, these thought patterns create these negative emotions of panic. And then they want, want to hold on tight and cope with that. And here we have the activating strategies, the calling, the clinging, these sorts of behaviors, which are just coping mechanisms to try to avoid these fear-based beliefs from having to be activated for too long um, or getting too out of hand. So so much of healing means reconditioning these things. Now we have neuroscience with neuroplasticity. I mean, there's, there's a lot of um, information out there that shows that we can recondition patterns that shows that we, we can um, regenerate these different uh, pain points that are taking place at a subconscious level. So I'm going to take you through a five-step process. Um, it's based off of uh, something called auto suggestion. It's actually a tool I created called belief reprogramming from auto suggestion, but also auto suggestion um, is this idea that we can sort of get into a suggestible state and then we can um, use repetition and emotion to rewire. So step one here is you're going to identify the core beliefs that affects you the most as an AP. That's obviously going to be, I am, or I will be abandoned. Step two is we find the opposite. Okay. And when we're trying to find the opposite, the reason we do this is because we're trying to equilibrate this program. So what's the opposite of being abandoned or alone? Well, being together or connected, okay? So how do I have togetherness and connection in my life is what we're really looking for. Now, something you need to know as well is that the conscious mind speaks through language. The subconscious mind speaks through emotion and imagery. So when we're trying to create a new program, we can't just use affirmations. You know, affirmations are kind of wishy-washy at times because if we just say, I'll be connected, I'll be connected, I'll be connected. Like, it's like saying, be confident, be confident, be confident. You're not getting anywhere. You're not gaining any traction. The pain exists at the subconscious level of mind. Okay. Not the conscious level of mind. Conscious speaks language, subconscious emotion and imagery. So we want to create change. We have to use our conscious to speak to our subconscious. So in this case, how do we pull up information at the subconscious level? And just so you stay focused, actually, I'm going to keep it on this slide. How do we pull up information at the subconscious level? Well, I'll come back to this screen share. I just want to make sure this part's really clear without distraction. So at the subconscious level, we have to pull up memory. Okay. Why? Well, because memory is the container of imagery and emotion, right? Remember the subconscious speaks through imagery and emotion. If I were to sit with you and say, close your eyes and tell me your favorite childhood memory, you would close your eyes. And as you're talking about it and kind of getting into remembering it, you would start smiling and your body language would shift and change. And, you know, you'd, you'd just sort of open your, your body language a little bit and feel more relaxed. And, and really what's happening is you're bringing up these images in your mind that are containers of emotion still, and that's actually creating a neurochemical and physiological impact, um, which is really cool if you think about it. So you're sitting there and the same thing would happen if I said, tell me a negative memory, right? You sit there and your body language would get closed and your muscles would contract and you might clench your jaw and you might have a cortisol or norepinephrine response and, you know, get into sort of sympathetic fight or flight nervous system mode. So when we're trying to change and recondition, right, or reprogram something, we have to speak in the language of the subconscious because the problem is not conscious. The problem is existing at the level of the subconscious mind. So what you do when you want to change, and I'll go back to the slide now. So I just want you to see that memory is the container of emotion and imagery. So we can think of memory as proof, okay? So when you're trying to recondition something, what we're essentially trying to do here is we're trying to, step one, figure out what you're trying to recondition, right? So which core belief? I'm abandoned, I'll be alone. Step two, what's the opposite? And then we want to look for the opposite, okay? And you can look in the seven areas of life, career, financially, mental, emotional, spiritual, physical relationships. You're looking for imagery plus emotion. So you're looking for memories, um, recent memories, past memories of things like 
how you are worthy of connection, um, why you will gain connection, why connection is possible, um, why relationships can last, why you won't be alone. It's the opposite of whatever your thought and belief patterns are that are hurting you, that are causing that suffering. And so what you want to be able to do is then find five pieces of proof every day for 21 days. Okay. Ideally you want to look for 10, but if you want to just get the ball rolling and start the reconditioning process, pick five. So every morning you're actually more suggestible for the first hour that you wake up. So it's always advised to like do it first thing in the morning when you're kind of like in that, you know, like half sleep, half waking space, your, your subconscious mind is just more open to reprogramming at that time. So you're picking the core belief. Let's use the one I am abandoned. Okay. What's the opposite? Well, I'm connected. Okay. Or worthy of connection. And then I'm going to look for po five pieces of evidence. You know, what traits I have that make me worthy of connection. Um, you know, what people I have in my life that I have connection around and that I'm deeply connected to. What happens is we fire and wire these new things at a subconscious level, speaking in the language of the subconscious mind. And they have to be specific images, right? So it, specific memory. So it would have to be, um, I know I'm worthy of connection because, you know, I, I have, these three dear friends in my life. And they always, you know, value our friendship and talk about how much they value the friendship. And yesterday my friends had X, Y, Z, and I felt really connected. Right. So you're picking these like actual memories and you can feel about them and you can visualize them in your mind when, when you bring them up. Right. And so now you're speaking in the language of the subconscious mind. And as you repeat this for 21 days, I mean, you always hear it takes 21 days to make a habit. It's because it takes 21 days to really form um, a decent subconscious program. And if we stop feeding into these old concepts and ideas and we have a habit first thing in the morning to kick off our day and start feeding into um, these, these rewiring concepts on the other side, well, then the repetition and emotion of that on a daily basis, especially first thing in the morning, starts to have these old neural pathways and painful ideas that you'll be abandoned atrophy over time. And these new neural pathways strengthen about how you have connection, all the people you're connected to, whether it's in the workplace your friendships, your romantic relationships, your family relationships. And so you'll start to feed into that more. Now, it doesn't mean that you will then never, you know, be upset or bothered by somebody pulling away, but it won't be the same relationship, right? If I rewire that program, so I'm no longer fearing abandonment or assuming abandonment all the time. It doesn't mean that if somebody pulls away in a relationship and stops talking to me, it doesn't bother me because I have needs in a relationship too. It's not just programming from a belief perspective, but a securely attached person that would affect, right? It's not going to feel good for a securely attached person if they're interested in somebody, in somebody for that person to pull away. And so what's going to happen is then you can get good at communicating your needs. Hey, I know you didn't call me back the other day. I appreciate consistency in relationships. Can we work on it? Right? So you're not coming from this activated space where you have to cling on and hold on. You're into coming from a place where you know what your preferences are and you can communicate them. And this is part of what secure attachment is all about, but it starts with one of these major components of, of reconditioning. Okay. Rewiring. There are many different tools for how to reprogram the subconscious mind. I can't stress enough that real healing involves reconditioning. If we're not reconditioning, I, I personally um, think that we're really just scratching the surface and healing. And I also think that when we look at relationships and life, you know, you don't really get to go that deep into things, right? It's like, sometimes we look at trying to control our behavior, like try to stop activating and hold it in and put our phone away or turn it off and not look. And it's like, Hey, you're not really like you're trying to suppress how you're feeling and suppress your behaviors with your conscious mind. But like, how about just reprogramming at the root level and just reconditioning this pain point here, right? Reconditioning this program that fears abandonment so much, then you don't have to feel all these bad feelings and then try to control your behavior and repress it. You actually just have a healthy relationship to what's happening. Right. So anyways, I hope this makes a lot of sense. I mean, there's so much more to cover. We have a whole, like, if you want to do a deep dive into this, every single course at the personal development school literally is all about reconditioning. So you can do a deep dive. You can check it all out. Um, any area of your life you want to focus on, whether it's your boundaries, codependency, reprogramming your attachment style, changing your communication patterns and relationships, reconditioning your relationship to your own emotions and emotional regulation or needs. All of that is covered in PDS in much more depth than I can ever go um, in these YouTube videos because I have 
the PowerPoints, the presentations, and you know, there, there are longer courses and they've all got worksheets for reconditioning and workbooks. So please check it out. You can check it out for free for seven days using the link below. Um, but hopefully this makes a whole lot of sense. Thank you for watching and for being here. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.